Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be dealing with estimating square roots because we've talked about perfect squares, meaning I could take the square root of a perfect square and it's a nice number. So, for example, if I had the square root of 4, I know that equals 2 because the two numbers that multiply to give me 4 are 2 times 2. So the square root of a perfect square will always be a nice whole even number. Not even, I'm a nice whole number. But what about when something is like the square root of 5, right? Because there's no two numbers that multiply that are the same to give me 5. But we could, of course, use a calculator to figure out the square root of 5, and it's going to be a decimal, we know that. But there's a way that we can estimate without even pulling out a calculator, and that's what this lesson is about today. All right, so let's look at number 7 here. It says, which two integers is the square root of 102 between? So, we know that 102 isn't a perfect square, but let's find two perfect squares that are around it. We're going to find a perfect square that's smaller than 102, and we're going to find a perfect square that's bigger than 102. So let's find a perfect square that's smaller. And again, you want it to be smaller, but you want it to be really close, as close as possible to 100. And the closest one is 100. The square root of 100, we know, equals 10. Okay. Now, a number that's bigger than 102, but that's also a perfect square, I believe it is 121. So the square root of 121 equals 11. So I know that the square root of 102 is somewhere between 10 and 11. So it's going to be a decimal between 10 and 11. Now, here's the next thing we look at here. So, but a 10 point what? It's going to be 10.7, 10.5. A lot of people think, oh, if it's in between, it's right in the middle, 10.5. But let's take a look at the square root they gave us. They said the square root of 102. So is 102 closer to 100? Or is it closer to 121? I think the square root of 102 is definitely closer to 100. So the decimal that 102 is going to be is going to be closer to 10. So if I had to make a guess, I'd say the square root of 102 would be somewhere like 10.1. Because I know it's going to be closer to 10, not closer to 11. Because the square root of 102 is closer to the square root of 100. Okay, so that's essentially what we're doing. Let's try number 8 here. So number 8... The, what, which two integers is the square root of 39 between? Okay, we know 39 is not a perfect square, so let's find the two perfect squares that are closest to it, one above, one below. The one below it is the square root of 36, which equals 6. And then the one above it would be the square root of 49, which is 7. So I know the square root of 39 is going to be between 6 and 7. Somewhere in between there. And in order to get a decimal answer, again, think about it. Is 39 closer to 36 or is 39 closer to 49? It's actually closer to 36 because this is a difference of 3, whereas 39 to 49 is a difference of 10. So if I had to guesstimate what the decimal would be, it's going to be closer to 6 rather than closer to 7. So I'd say 6.2. Again, I'm making a total guess, but I know the decimal will be closer to 6 than it is to 7. Okay, so that's kind of the general idea of how you estimate the square root that isn't a perfect square. And so you find the two perfect squares, one below it, one above it, and you know what two numbers it's between, and then with that information you can guesstimate which, uh, where the decimal could estimate to be. Is it closer to 6 or 7? Is it closer to 10 or 11? Again, you just look at the, which, the number, which square root is closest to.